would like to call the uh, the meeting of the city council to order. Yeah, you're good. Uh, 6 06 p.m. We'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Um, Navarrete? Here. Wilson? Here. Tillman? Williams? Here. Gardner? Here. Smith. Here. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and in the name of liberty and justice for all. I'd like to call up uh, Pastor. We got Pastor Stokes and Pastor Fletcher to say offer a word of prayer. I know Pastor um, Fletcher, you have a uh, Fluker. Fluker. Uh, Fluker. Fluker, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thinking of someone else. Sorry. You have an event tonight. Yes. So please announce that after you give us word of prayer. You can go ahead. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. City Council meeting, constituents of the city. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this day, we thank you for this moment, and we thank you for this season that we're in. Now, as we come together to meet, bless every word that is spoken, every movement that's made, that you get the glory. It is in Jesus' name that we do everything decent and in order. Thank God. Amen. 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 To the great city of Calumet City, to our mayor, uh, yours truly, a part of our national church, Church of God in Christ, I am running for the secretary position for the General Council of Pastors and Elders. We have 42,000 elders and 12,000 pastors, and I will serve as the secretary for the General Council of Pastors and Elders from this great city of Calumet City. Tonight is the in-person rally at All Nations Church of Chicago, and after the city council meeting, if you're not busy, I would love for you to come, 520 Sibley Boulevard, to the All Nations Church of Chicago for a rally to support Pastor Andre Fluker and my lovely wife, who is running for the trustee board for the National Church, we're making history. We're the first couple in the history of Church of God in Christ that is running for a national office at the same time. We solicit your prayers, your support, and those of you that are in the Church of God in Christ, your vote. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So tonight, uh, I would like to, uh, we have a presentation on the agenda. Uh, regarding our shoppers world uh, if I can have a motion to deviate from the regular order of business to present um, Greg who's going to present uh, from his, his company and tell us about shoppers world uh, this is an economic development uh, opportunity for the city uh, we've had many discussions about this uh, we've engaged uh, Greg and his company uh, to go out and look at the the property uh, work with Cook County Land Bank um, so if there's a motion to deviate from the regular order of business at 609, motion made by Alderman Smith. Second. Second by Alderman Wilson. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We are in deviation. Uh, Greg will turn everything over to you to introduce yourself, your company, and uh, what we're talking about tonight. All right. Just want to say thank you to the council and the mayor again for giving me an opportunity to be here today. My name is Greg Williams. and. I'm the president and principal architect of Gregory Ramon Design Studio. We're an architecture firm. We're located in Chicago, but we've done and do work all over the city and also in other states in the U.S. too. Um, just, we got a lot of information we want to get through tonight, so I'm going to try to be as quick as possible about going through here. Uh, just, I'll give you a little bit more information and background on what we do, but also we'll get into talking about the project purpose. Uh, for this, uh, looking at re doing this redevelopment project of the shopping center. Talk about some of the visions and goals that we discussed with the mayor for that site. And then we'll review the concept design and then talk about some uh, potential next steps on how you move forward from that piece there. So again, uh, our firm is in Chicago. We've you know worked all over uh, the, the U.S. We've done uh, numerous projects. When I first started the, the company, I started in healthcare and have been working in the industry for over 20 years. So again, just to clarify, we are the architects. We're not a developer. I think that would be the next step for 
uh, one of the next steps for moving the project forward is to connect with the developer and start going through some additional analyses and other um, you know, community meetings to make sure that the development meets the needs of the surrounding area and uh, the folks that it'll be developed for. Um, as far as you know, what we do typically, this is a good example in terms of uh, providing services related to pre-design and programming, very similar to what we're doing here. We started by having conversations with the mayor about the project, understanding some of the goals and the ideas for taking that existing shopping center, which is underutilized right now, and redeveloping that. Um, the other piece of that is, we'll get into that a little bit more, but a lot of what we're doing and talking about tonight is this programming and feasibility study and then the concept design portion. Uh, one of the things that we're, we strive to do on every project is this statement, I think, really sums it up, designing experiences that create change where we work. And a lot of times that's done through making sure we have the right conversations with uh, the, the people who are going to be impacted by that design as well as making sure that it's designed with everyone that's going to use it being in mind there. So let's talk about a little bit about the purpose of the project. Um, I'm sure everyone is familiar with the site, but this is an aerial uh, map view, just kind of showing, and that star in the center represents where the site is. And so these circles that you see on the screen really represent these radiuses that we tend to look at from an urban planning standpoint, because that really tells us, starts to tell us how long does it take someone to get somewhere from that center point. So you got the, the one mile radius, and then a half mile and a quarter mile. Those are represented by the, the red is the smaller one, that's the quarter mile, the orange is the half, and then the one mile, uh, the larger one. What we tend to focus on uh, when we're looking at developing, doing a development like this, these larger master plan projects are the, uh, the, the quarter mile and the half mile, because that's what those equate to is a five minute walk and a 10 minute walk. Because a lot of times that's what people are willing to walk to get somewhere to a particular amenity or a service whatever so what we do is we look to see when we're you know taking a look at an existing site what type of amenities are right around in that area so looking at this site we know that that the, the overall site is surrounded by school districts uh, we do know that there is some um, you know larger scale shopping amenities nearby uh, some residential but when you look at that orange circle you can see that there's very little residential that that falls within that space you got some part you got the forest preserve to the north of our site but very little residential there. And one of the things that we're looking at and talking about with this project is incorporating uh, quite a bit of housing here too, in addition to uh, incorporating some additional uh, retail and amenities too. When we, we've gone out to the site and we talked about the project with the mayor, we know that <coughs> Shoppers World and Shoe Carnival, those are really the key anchor stores that are there and those are really the ones that are utilized right now. All the other space is vacant. So we, we look at this to try and understand are there opportunities to uh, revitalize that area and create something that will bring some life back into that space and that area over there too. The site itself is 11 acres total. And of that 11 acres, uh, 130,000 square feet of that is the existing building, which equates to three acres. So it's a fairly large site and a lot of that's underutilized. So really looking to see how can we take advantage of that to develop something that would um, you know, make better use of the space now based on kind of the needs and things that people are looking for these days. So this image here is just an aerial looking at the property, and these are some other images around the site. Um, one of the things that we did when we first started the project too was we went through um, the series of existing conditions analysis because the building, as far as we know, from what we got from Cook County, it was constructed in the 70s, and I th believe there's been some additions over that time, but there hasn't been a lot of uh, you know, maintenance done on the building too, because I know when we were out on site, we noticed that there are several vertical cracks in the, in the walls that kind of radiate it down to the, uh, to the grade or to the slab there. So I, I think just visually looking at it, that was the extent of the visual observations of the building. But a part of that process was we went through and we did uh, 3D laser scanning of the building, which is basically so that we could generate existing drawings because there were no existing conditions drawings for this property. Uh, at least Cook County doesn't have them. So we did that to, to get an understanding of the overall existing layout. Uh, we did what are geotechnical analysis, which were basically they take uh, cores, six inch, about six inch to eight inch diameter cores into the ground around the property so that we could analyze and see the soil bearing capacity. That would tell us, because we're thinking about, we were thinking about putting an addition on here, 
would that be feasible to do? And so we did find out through that analysis that the soil would support a taller structure uh, on, at this property on the site. So we were able to confirm that as we were going through. And the other piece that we did early on with this was we had a, a roofing contractor come out to do an analysis on the roof to just let us know, is this a patch job or is this a complete replacement? And so it, it turned out because of the age of it, it would definitely need to be something that gets replaced. But again, thinking about what the proposal is, a portion of that would get replaced, but a portion of this, because of the new addition, would be new roofing anyway as well. So when we, when we think about the, the project itself, we're, uh, we kind of got into thinking about what are the overall goals. So these, are, these bullet points here just really hit on the goals that we were looking at um, and, and thinking about as we were working on and developing design, really meeting current needs of people and the residents who are looking for you know, just more, um, more um, engaging opportunities or developments that have housing, retail, restaurants, more of that in that area, and recreation too. Because I think when we look at that site, having some of the outdoor, potential outdoor spaces too around in the area will be, will be ideal. And really just transforming this property uh, into something that will make it useful 24 seven basically. So when we thought about that and thinking about the project vision, this is where this kind of comes in is really a vibrant, thriving development that will help with the community uh, development, economic growth. Those things will provide a catalyst for not only this, but also other developments around here because if we know directly to the east of this property, there's another mall or you know, a true mall across there that could probably benefit from some of the same ideas as this. So looking and talking about the concept design, um, what we did too is a lot of times what we like to do is see what other examples are out there to see what's available. So that's a part of this precedent study to see how it's been done, who else has done it. This example that we saw is one in California, Westminster Mall. And this is an aerial of that site. Again, I put this up here to just show their similarities in terms of the overall site. There's usually a sea of parking around the building. You got a large building there. And this one, again, same situation. Um, shopping trends have changed over time, so they were doing the same thing, is looking to see how uh, they could redevelop this property to be more a, a more utilized space. So in here, this is another existing building, uh, existing, a picture of the existing property. And these are some of the proposed concepts that they had on that project. Again, they're incorporating amenities such as retail, restaurants, housing, and they, they accomplished this with vertical additions on here. But also, you can see there are some exterior uh, uh, park space as well that they've transformed uh, from uh, a lot of the parking areas out there. And these were just a couple of other examples, too, uh, that were included that we, that we saw as we were looking this up. So a lot, this idea is not, it's not old, um, or it's not a new idea. Uh, but at the same time, there aren't a lot of examples yet of that being uh, completed, but there are some that are in process right now. So developments like this can take a while to get to the uh, to the you know to the final design too. So really, what, what we're talking about today is a very early, very very early stages of it. Um, things that we consider what are always important for us to look at. We we'll think about building heights, setbacks. What are the design features? What kind of open space requirements are we going to have there, uh, and so on. Some of these things will continue to be developed as the project moves on. So when we talked about the this program areas that will be included in design, the, the spaces are basically, these are some spaces that the mayor has confirmed um, and has gotten commitments on some of these restaurants that, that are listed here. So when we were looking at uh, doing the development, what, laying off the space plan, we utilized those, uh, those restaurants as spaces that would be included here. The other piece of this is we have a, a residential that's included here. We have a mix of one and two bedroom units as well as some uh, some three and four bedrooms on the upper floors primarily. And then there's also gonna be uh, residential amenities, some outdoor amenity space and other building support spaces. So here, um, this, is the, this is the overall site plan. So I will, I don't know if I can point here. You can see north is up on here, by the way. So the building uh, that we're looking at is this, the kind of curvilinear form. That's the tower that's gonna come and sit on top of the existing building. There's also going to be uh, a redevelopment of that outdoor um, parking lot area to turn some of that into a green or a green space or a park area. So the circles that you see on here are not the areas for the, you know, those particular areas such as outdoor performance 
or the, um, the food vendors. That's not necessarily saying the design of it. That's just saying how much space we would allocate towards those uh, things out there. But this is about 128,000 square feet of outdoor park area that could be used, and that would be an amenity for uh, the, the new development here. And so here are some images. This is an aerial view. And really what we've incorporated or what's being incorporated here, because now we're adding additional um, retail and restaurant spaces as well as the residential, this becomes a mixed-use space. And then there, if you have the ground level uh, plaza area, that would be extended out uh, from where it is existing now. There's also a couple of rooftop. Uh, the second floor would have a rooftop amenity space that would be uh, accessed by the, uh, the restaurant that's on that floor as well as the entertainment space up there. And all of the other floors beyond that, as you can see here, would be all of the, the rest of the, um, the residential uh, from floors three through eight. So this ground floor plan is, is just to show uh, those brown spaces that you're seeing, those are, uh, would be considered business use spaces. So you have your, all of the restaurants as well as one of the other things we talked about incorporated in, into this footprint would be a shared work or, or co-working space potentially having that there. But at this level you have all of the restaurants um, as well as Shoppers World and Shoe Carnival would still have a space in here, but their square footage uh, it gets reduced in this particular, um, this particular design, because right now they really have the majority of that space over there. So the second floor, as we're looking at this, the, uh, the, the, the bluish purple color represents the, those entertainment spaces as well as the restaurant <coughs> space, and then you have the roof terraces accessed by both of those there. And then floors three through seven would be the, the, the levels for all of the residential uh, apartment units. And at the eighth level right now, what we're showing, the penthouse level, you'd have some larger units and then a, a roof terrace that would be um, accessed by the residents. And these are just a few of the images that we put together for that. This is one kind of looking at going into the main entry of the building. And some just materials right now we're thinking could be metal panels, high pressure laminate panels, or a fiber cement uh, panel for the exterior. So as I mentioned, in some of the, in, in the investigations that we did early on related to the geotechnical analysis, that really allowed us to think about the structural framing. So the report that was put out that we provided to the city goes into more detail about the uh, structural framing options, because we looked at both concrete as an option as well as steel. Steel tends to be, uh, tends to be a cheaper route. It's from a structural engineering standpoint, concrete is easier to do the engineering on, but I know from a construction standpoint, still would be uh, usually as a more cost-effective approach. And a portion of this existing structure, like I mentioned, would remain, because we're not affecting that whole footprint, the whole 130 square foot area uh, footprint, but we are, uh, the portion that we are doing is about 70,000 square foot of that existing roof, so the other half of that, the structure would remain, we'd be replacing the roof uh, there. And then we also, just last thing, we looked at another just another option that was not as curvilinear, something that followed the form of the existing building more so, but I think this is something that we would pick up with a developer just to go through other options um, as we move forward, uh, if the project continues on from there. So in terms of next steps, I, if we were to do additional investigations, I think you definitely want to do more where we can get, to, uh, get into a little bit more of the existing building integrity. Uh, we were not able to do any core samples uh, of the walls or in, inside of the building since that isn't owned by the city right now. But I think understanding if there are any other issues with the existing foundation, uh, we want to understand that. Uh, definitely identifying a developer um, and also uh, performing a market analysis so that, which would also be a part of the, you know, looking at demographic studies, seeing is the, is the, the unit mix or the, the spaces that are being proposed, is, is that right for the area right now? Is it going to, uh, is that going to pan out? And then also understanding our, you know, competitive landscape. Are there any other developments coming? Are there some that would offer similar things in the area? Those are some of the things that we want to think about in a moving forward here. And then also from there, uh, going through a development plan and establishing the financial plan, understanding what the capital stack would be for this. How, how do you get to uh, the, the funds to pay for that entire development? And again, the pricing information was put in the, in the report for this. And from there, there's uh, you know, community engagement, more meetings and things too as well that would have to happen. 
But I know I had a little bit of time. Hopefully I got through uh, everything. We're now at the uh, Q&A session. So yeah. Yeah. anybody have any questions that we want to go through? Yeah. You went past the five minutes, but that's all right. But <laughs> 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 well, for the record, we, uh, Alderman Gardner is in the meeting at 6, 12 p.m. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Williams? Uh, just for the record, my office is working with not only the state of Illinois, but the Cook County Land Bank uh, through myself, Alderman Gardner, which is our appointed representative. Uh, working with a developer, we've secured uh, the restaurants that Mr. Williams has put on there. Uh, now the goal will be for the city to work with uh, the Cook County Land Bank, state of Illinois. Uh, our ask from the state, uh, to the state of Illinois will be for them to help fund this project. Uh, public-private partnership through the Illinois Closing Fund. So we wouldn't ask the city to take out any bonds for this project. We would ask um, through the state of Illinois. Uh, so we will bring those resolutions before the city council uh, asking uh, the governor in the state of Illinois to help fund this project. Uh, the potential uh, for this project was $68 million. Um, So the potential in the report we listed 110 million. Okay, yeah. that was 40 some million off. I think the limit with the state is 60 million, so okay. the, any developer would have to do that difference. Okay. Are there any questions for the council members regarding the boring samples or what was presented today? If not, Mr. Williams, thank you for the uh, presentation. Thank you for doing all of the work on it. Uh, I know you submitted uh, all that information to the council, so if they have any questions, they can contact you afterwards, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. While we're still in deviation, we uh, want to address two other matters. Uh, we would like to bring John Kasparic up to talk about the budget. We started our budget process. We presented a balanced budget to the city council. We do have hearings. We invite the public to come out. Our next hearing will be uh, Monday, the 15th, also the 16th, uh, the 22nd. Uh, by law, we have to post the budget, uh, the draft budget, uh, 10 days before we pass it. Uh, we are going to post it in uh, the newspaper, and then also we presented it to the city council. So, John, can you come up briefly and talk about uh, our budget process along with uh, the work you're doing with Alderman Gardner, who's the chairman of the Finance Committee? Uh, John, before you got here, the city council voted uh, that we're only going to give you two minutes. So you have two minutes. Thank you, Mayor, City Council. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, and the public. Uh, yes, I already have public safety. Tommy, hurry, or it could be an issue for me. Anyway, uh, right now we're in the process of just starting the budget, uh, the budget meetings. We had one uh, earlier in the week. Uh, we had one this past Monday. We have three more scheduled meetings to go over the budget. It will be next week Monday, next week Tuesday, uh, 15th, 16th, and then we'll have another meeting on the 22nd. As the, uh, and the, the 22nd meeting is more of a recap meeting. We'll have already met with the department heads to go over their budgets. Uh, we're also going to address the, the salary ordinance. Uh, as well at that meeting and any other things that may, ha may have been brought up during the course of the, bu the budget process. As the mayor indicated, the, the budget is a balanced budget. The uh, estimated revenues for the general fund alone are in excess of $50 million. However, the expenses are also at $50 million. So uh, again, these are estimated revenues, but our treasurer does a fine job of estimating them. We came in very close last year does include some grant revenue from our hardworking departments that have gotten additional monies to help subsidize part of the public safety payroll, uh, economic development coming up with various incentives to help uh, new business as well as current businesses. Uh, the budget also does include the water sewer fund. It includes a, a capital projects fund, which is basically made up of major capital grants that we may get and so we don't put them into the corporate fund we have them in a separate one so that money can only be spent of course if the grants come in we also have funding for our police and fire pensions and uh just as again council as a okay as a as a uh, as a note our april 30, april 30th 
43024 contributions to police and fire exceeded the actuarial required contributions. So we will continue to fund the pensions to the full amount uh, required by the actuaries. Uh, there's also a special service area in there that uh, in our budget. Uh, our IMRF slash Social Security Fund are also in the budget that covers the pensions of the non-public safety. And uh, I believe those are all of the funds. Um, and uh, everybody should be getting the appropriation ordinance soon because it's already been prepared. I forwarded it to the mayor. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Thank you, John. This budget also does not include any tax increases. We know that Taxes are sensitive to residents now since everyone got reassessed and got the assessment from the Cook County uh, Assessor and Treasurer's Office. Uh, our taxes have not gone up in Calumet City and we were proud of that and we want to make sure that everyone knows that. Uh, on the agenda tonight we have an official tax protest that was going to go to the Governor and it's going to go to Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle, uh, Cook County Assessor uh, Fritz Keggy and also to the treasurer, Maria Pappas. Uh, in addition to that, I am following a bill in Springfield uh, that's gonna address the tax issue uh, for the South Suburbs, including Calumet City. Uh, we'll give a copy of that to the city council. Uh, it should be ready in a week, but it's my hope and our hope for the city council that we pass not only this resolution tonight, but uh, when we get to Springfield, we'll have support for telling the governor we want to designate the entire south suburbs, including Calumet City, a special tax designation where there's a flat fee as opposed to assessment after assessment that's drawing up the taxes. So we want to encourage the council to pass that tonight. And then once we get the bill filed in Springfield for veto session, we'll encourage the council to support that as well. But John, thank you for doing a good job uh, with, the, with the budget. Again, uh, we have our budget dates that it's on our website. If you have any questions, you can either call my office or direct them to John uh, or our city treasurer to answer any questions or, or the alderman uh, regarding the budget. But thank okay. you, John. Thank you, Alderman, Mayor, public. At this time, is there a motion to uh, go back in the regular session at 6.33 p.m.? Motion made by Alderman Smith, second by Alderman Patton. We are back in, all in favor? I'm sorry. Um, we are back in the regular session of business at 6.33 p.m. Uh, on our agenda tonight, uh, we did roll call. We are at item number four on our agenda, which is uh, public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to comment on any item on the agenda? If so, please step to the mic. Please step to the mic. How's everybody doing tonight? My name's Tom Horvath. I've lived in Calumet City for 50 years. Uh, Mayor, if you could, uh, did you just say that uh, after the assessor doubled the appraisal of homes that the taxes didn't go up? No, I said Calumet City portion didn't go up. So there's nine portions on your tax bill or 11? Well, my taxes were $2,900 a year, which is high enough for a little shoebox, 1,100 square foot home I live in, which is way more than South Holland pays. Cal City pays 4.50% where the county norm is 2.86%. Now I went, just went. Now last year the assessor sent this letter I have here that says, uh, that says this won't reflect on your uh, property tax bill, this increase. So we know that's a lie. They preemptive a strike to do what they just did to all of us. Because I talked to plenty of people in Cal City, and I'm sure you know, Mayor. And uh, my taxes just went from 2,900 a year for my 1,100 foot shoebox to what's going to be 8,000. Okay. And 
I don't, and I know people that got the same, that's almost triple. And I don't know how they ex just say, hey man, you're just gonna pay us this money and there ain't a damn thing you can do about it. What they just did ain't any different than the Middle Ages when they'd come around door to door in chariots or whatever and knock down your door and take what they want and say it's tax time. There ain't any difference than the Middle Ages. And I'm wondering if you're going to fight for us, Mayor. Because I know if I was mayor, I'd already been down there to Preck Winkle's office and say these people at Calumet City ain't, ain't getting the damn uh, stuck with this anymore. We're doing it since for years, man. Cal City pays 450. Higher than South, high, highest of all the 17 uh, cities that we are in junction with here. And I'm wondering if you're gonna fight for us and say, we ain't having it, man. This, this man pays 3,000 a year. I lived there 50 years. This man can't afford it, man. I'm a stroke survivor, okay? I'm 61. I don't wanna move. I'm too old to freaking move, man. And if I don't pay, what happens? I get thrown out of my family's house that been in my family for 60 damn years. That's what they do to people in this city. Illinois has been going down. People have been leaving for years. And you can listen to Maria Pappas sit and spew her bunk that, well, the way things are, is you got three houses vacant on the block. So now the rest of the people got to pick up that slack, right? There's no vacant houses on my block. Why am I paying eight grand now that I don't have? I pay for medicines, man. Like I said, I'm a stroke survivor, man. Where does it end? The insurance companies, auto insurance raking us, just raising us. And nobody does nothing about nothing, man. I'm a damn veteran, for Pete's sake, man. I fought for this fucking uh, freedom. I don't see freedom. I hate to get huffy, Mayor, but I'm telling you, man, enough's enough, man. You need to go down there, tell them to reverse these bills to the back what they were. Because it ain't fair. It ain't fair to human beings. I don't see why the American Civil Liberties Union ain't on the frickin' case. Because this is, I don't know what it is, third world country. This is mid-ages, just knocking down the doors, taking what you want, slapping you around. And nobody does nothing. All they do is spew the same old lies, which ain't true. All I heard from anyone in Cal City and probably you, Mayor, when you were running for what you're standing at my gate, same thing they all tell us. We don't have a say. Cal City don't have a say. I don't have a say. That's crap. If you wanted to say, you would have that say. And when you're ready to have that say down at Preckwinkles, I'll go with you. And I bet you everybody in this goddamn town will go with you. Because I know I will. You fight for me. I got, I got your back. I stand fighting you side by side with you. But it needs to stop. It needs to end now. Don't put up with the lies. Let's file a action lawsuit started by the mayor to say we ain't taking it, man. I'm a veteran, a stroke survivor. I got to live in the doggone street like so many of them already freaking do. And now they want to find the people homeless because they're homeless if you, if you watch the news. Yeah. All we do is suffer, man. And I worked hard all my life, man. Paid my bills, raised my families. For what? For what? For nothing. I'm working for nothing. Now I got a bill right here for 4200 freaking dollars. It should be... Uh, 1400 like last year. So brought me in here tonight.
I was hoping I wasn't the only one. Listen, 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 Tom. Listen, we're gonna keep the quorum, so we don't need you guys shouting in the audience. If you want to come up and talk, Tom, Tom, we are gonna fight for you. We have a resolution on on here tonight. Thank you. We do have a resolution on to, on here tonight. Uh, I don't think anyone on this city council has said that uh, Calumet City has not raised uh, the taxes. So we're going to make sure that we keep things in order and we're going to fight for this city and fight for other communities. Calumet City is number five uh, when it comes to like the tax rate. We have kept taxes down. We have brought in programs. But we want to make sure that you're going to help us when we get this bill passed in the General Assembly and we make sure that the assessor pays attention to Calumet City and our fight to lower our taxes. Is there anyone else, if you guys want to uh, line up, if there's anyone that want to uh, speak, please line up on the side. Uh, I'll be waiting for my bill to change. We got you, Tom. Okay. If it's not, I'm going to keep fighting. Tom. All right. we, we, okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mayor all the aldermen, commissioners, officers, and so forth and so forth. My name is Wanda Smith. I've been a prominent resident here for years. I'm also a small African-American business owner who also has been seeking some type of grant to be a part of the community and all those different buildings they're trying to be, but it's also been unsuccessful. A lot of talk, no show. But when it comes to these taxes, and I'm going to make that short and sweet because he made a lot of uh, elegant points. Um, I'm at 1424 Pulaski Road. I used to be at 300 Warren. I just purchased this home, March 27th. Taxes is totally ridiculous. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a petition going in my second ward. I'm going downtown. I tried to come here and talk to my mayor. I got upstairs. And when I got upstairs, I got a card put in my face. And I told the young lady, I said, no, I don't want that. I opened my phone because I maybe was one of the first 10 who got a chance to have a meeting with the mayor when he first won election that my vote put him in for. I said, I don't want that. I said, because if I made it upstairs, I talked to one nice young lady, then his assistant came. She knew what I was there for. I'm quite sure the word was passed on. By that time, she should have came to me and said, here's your appointment, and this is the day that you need to come and have an interview with the mayor. Not give me a card to go back downstairs, as I can say hypothetically, like a slave, and then open up my phone and make the appointment or go home and make it when I was already here. Second of all, when I voted, I can still say my mayor in here. I voted for the words that he stipulated out of his mouth, and that's to be the mayor of Calumet City to fix the things that they said that the last mayor did not succeed in doing properly. But when it comes to you swearing on the oath to be the mayor, the mayor does consist, if I'm wrong, I want somebody to correct me because I'm not a politician. It's for every ward, not just pick and choose which ones. The second ward needs things. The second ward needs budgets fulfilled. My alderman, Mrs. Wilson, I'm going to speak today in her behalf, and I've never made it to one of these meetings. And we go to her and we complain. And I get in my car, and I follow her, and I know she comes here, not here saved by what I saw. And she puts it on the desk, and she gives it to whomever, good, bad, indifferent. Then it's up to the mayor to say yay or nay, approved or disapproved. But a lot of us want to go back and just cuss this lady out and be mistreated. She does her job. Once she takes our complaints and our positive feedback and bring it here, it's done. It's time. It's somebody else's job to listen to those cries. And it's getting bad out here. But I say one thing, I'm not going to yell, I'm not going to cuss, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to put one foot in front of the other and I'm going to make my voice be heard. $8,000 in taxes? 
I got a double pen. You don't even want to know what it is now. You say eight times what? Two. From March 27 to now. No. What you said you was going to do, do it. We got a budget now. We want to build all these buildings and put all these stores in our community to make revenue fine and dandy. But help the people first. Help us. Because we voted you in. We voted Mayor Michelle in. We voted Mayor Michelle out. And we voted you in. Fill in the dash. Have a good evening. Good evening, Mayor. Council, how you all doing? My name is uh, Larry Andrews. I'm one of the co-founders of the Calumet City Thunderbolts Youth Football and Cheer Program. And basically we're here asking for you all support. Uh, we've been here since 2010. Uh, we've worked our way up into uh, what we feel like a real good staple in the community. We have a lot of uh, success in mentoring and monitoring the kids, uh, providing proper placement for them to get that mentorship as well as stay off the streets. Um, as you all know, we're living in the same world. It's rough out here right now. We need support. So that's what we're here for, to ask for you all to support the organization. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members. I just wanted to make a correction on the agenda under financial matters, uh, number 23. The date says August 12th, it should be August the 3rd. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Mayor and the Council. I don't know if it's going to make a lot of sense of what I'm going to say right now, because my, the first man that came to the mic microphone said it all. What, the reason I'm here, too, the same reason that I've been living in here for 18 years. And when I saw my bill, when I opened it up, honestly, I went backwards, couldn't believe it. I, th I was thinking it was an error. But when I started talking to my neighbors and, I, and telling me the same thing, $4,000 when I was paying 18, $1,800 uh, 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 six months, every six months, not even $4,000 a whole year. And when I see the second installment for $4,400, just like my neighbor right here, I, I almost have a heart attack like he's talking about, you know. I'm, I'm very disappointed about, hopefully you do something about it, because I've been living in, I mean, 18 years in this neighbor, and I'm, honestly, I'm not ready to move out of here, because I got a family to support. I'm the only one working in my family. I got five kids. I, I got five children to support, and I'm the only one working. And when I see these bills, you know what is going to happen. The bank is going to send me the letter and, and erase my payment around, I don't know how much, but I'm, I'm already waiting. Waiting on, to see if you really say that you're going to do something about it. I'm going to be looking into it, if you really going to help us. Because believe me, the most of the people in here are about this reason. We don't care about no developments or whatever you got. We, this is the major, major thing that you got to take care of first. The people who be living in here for years, like my man over here, 50 years. How do you feel that he's feeling right now? I'm hopeless right now. That's exactly how I'm feeling right now. And the, re the, the, the first thing when I opened this letter, I was waiting for this meeting. Waiting for this meeting. That's the reason you only see the Spanish guy, and I'm very surprised. Because all the Spanish co-workers who live in this neighborhood told me that they were going to be here. And I'm the only Spanish people in here. But I was hoping to explain myself to you, and I hope I did the best uh, uh, even though that I know how to explain myself very well, but I hope that you understand how I feel exactly my friend, like right here. We, uh, 
And I hope that you're going to do something about for the residents because they are the ones who put you in. That's it. Thank you so much. My name is Manuel Torres. How you all doing? I'll be real quick. Uh, my name is Michael McGowan. I am a homeowner uh, here in Calumet City. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to have second and third generation of uh, family that's lived in Calumet City. Um, I just want to say first and foremost, thank you to the police station, the police department, I'm sorry, uh, for supporting, uh, providing uh, a sense of safety uh, for our young uh, student athletes. Uh, I am a, a coach, mentor of the Calumet City Thunderbolts. Uh, I want to say thank you to uh, anyone that is a part of the park district as well as the school board. Uh, for many years they have uh, supported us. Uh, I would like to say uh, if uh, possible, um, we would love for the city uh, support in any way, fashion or form uh, so we can continue to mentor these kids uh, and sometimes adults uh, and carry on our legacy. Uh, again, we are uh, volunteers. Uh, we do donate our time um, and we would like to continue that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the City Council during public forum? If not, uh, we're going to move on to our agenda tonight. Uh, item five is approval of minutes. You have the minutes before you. Uh, are there any corrections or any changes to the minutes? If not, can someone please make a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Motion made by Alderman Wilson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Tillman. I'm sorry, for the record, Alderman Tillman is in the meeting at 6.26 p.m. Motion was made by, or a second by Alderman Tillman. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Uh, Smith. Patton? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Williams? Yes. Tillman? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Navarrete? Yes. Motion approved 6 uh, 0 to pass the minutes of the meeting. Uh, next on the agenda reports of standing committees uh, Finance, Alderman Gardner? Uh, no reports tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Public Safety, Alderman Williams? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, while we, uh, we like to recognize our public safety uh, officials as well, we have in the back um, our police chief, Kevin Kolosh. Chief, you want to wave to everyone? We also have our fire chief, Glenn Bockert, uh, in the back. We have from the Police and Fire Commission, uh, Mr. Butch Carradine. Sitting next to him, we have uh, Pastor Stokes. Uh, up front, we have our Deputy Fire Commissioner, I mean Deputy Fire Chief, Pete Mendinelli. Sorry, Pete. Uh, in the back, we have our uh, City uh, Administrator, Chief of Staff, Deanne Jeffrey. We also have in the back, Val Williams uh, from our Community Economic Development Department. We have Mr. Mike Bansky, our Crime Free Housing Coordinator. Uh, we have our officers, uh, our imitation of our governor, J.B. Pritzker. As we, uh, we also have uh, Sean Howard. And in the back, we have Jerry Sarufka, our water commissioner. And in the back, we have Director Cheryl Tillman of our building and zoning department. And John Kasparic spoke for five minutes uh, in the back as well. I want to introduce our staff. Uh, public you. I'm sorry, Matt, we have Matt Berger, our city engineer tonight, and of course, our city attorney, uh, Mark Sturt. Public Utilities, uh, Alderman Wilson. Thank you. Um, we will have a public utilities meeting the first available date in August. I will send that out um, once I confirm with the committee. That's all. Thank you, Alderman. 
Ordinance and resolutions, Alderman Tillman. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, under item 11, new business ordinances and resolutions, uh, item number two is a resolution protesting Cook County Assessor property tax increases for Calumet City and the South Suburban communities. Uh, the tax hike in the South Suburbs clearly disproportionately affected those in our community as it relates to the greater Cook County area. We are hoping this resolution, along with other measures, attract enough attention to this problem that leads to a solution. Uh, we are asking that the aldermen present uh, support this measure and we'll follow up with everybody afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Health, Education, Welfare, Alderman Navarrete. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as uh, newly appointed Health, Education, and Welfare uh, Chairman, uh, I'll be setting up meetings with the, the superintendent um, of schools, uh, superintendents of schools, also the library, uh, as they fall under the purview um, of health, education, and welfare. And I hope uh, from those conversations to have uh, a meeting to discuss any concerns uh, and address any issues uh, that those organizations in town have. So um, hope to have a, a report for the first um, uh, committee meeting at our next regular city council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Permits and licensing, Alderman Padden. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there will be a permits and licensing committee meeting called in short order. Alderman Gardner has a couple of items I believe he wants to come before our committee, and so we may ju we may call a permits and license committee meeting or a committee of the whole joint between my committee and his. Um, so more information on that to follow. Thank you, Alderman. Public Works, Alderman Smith. No report, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman. City Council reports. Let's start, uh, Alderman Smith. Yes, uh, first and foremost, I uh, want to encourage the suburb Ward residents continue to report uh, issues of vacant properties or any type of neglect as well as suspicious activity. Also, the monthly town hall meeting will be held on Saturday, the uh, July the 20th from 10 a.m. to noon at DA's Banquet Hall on 159th Street in the seventh ward. Also, uh, I will be scheduling a series of property tax appeals, so please uh, be on the lookout uh, for information on that on the city's website. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please contact my office, 708-891-8197, or email a smith at calumetcity.org. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Six Ward, Alderman Patton. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the residents that came out to our Sixth Ward Street to Street meeting last night, um, which was held at the corner of 163rd Street and Shirley. Um, we had a great turnout last night, lots of good questions. Uh, I think we were able to solve a number of problems that residents have been um, trying to get resolved, and we got them, most of them resolved very quickly. So thanks to everybody that came out to that. Um, and as always, continue to call my office, 708-891-8196 with any issues. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman. Fifth Ward Alderman uh, Gardner. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to first start off by thanking all of the uh, staff, city administration for their support in the loss of my grandmother. Um, the support was much needed. Thank you all that showed up, flowers, emails, text messages. Uh, next, I would like to let the residents know that I sympathize with them. As a stakeholder myself, uh, I would do anything in my power uh, to stand with the residents and join the fight with the mayor uh, when we take that fight on. Uh, it's gonna be a tough task, but I do sympathize with the residents with the tax hike. Tax hike. I experienced a tax increase myself, and so I want the residents to know that I stand with you all, uh, and I will be joining the fight. <coughs> Uh, next, I would like to uh, thank the Public Works Department for their, uh, uh, their, their uh, service in the ward, cutting down trees. Um, if you see any vacant houses, overgrown vegetation, continue to report those to my office. In the near future, I will be holding a town hall meeting and also tax appeal seminars to further explain tax increases uh, to the residents and appeals and any answer questions that the residents may have. If you need any assistance, call my office 708-891-8195. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you.
Kentucky Alderman, Fort Worth Alderman. Thank Williams. you, Mayor. Uh, first, good heart of God, it makes all things possible. Uh, just a disclosure, I am, I am a little under the weather, sinus issues, uh, no COVID, I'm COVID free. So, um, I just want to thank the residents that came out to the ward meetings and the uh, people that uh, participated in the paper shredding. Uh, I think we have probably about 500 people, so I want to thank those that uh, had some dealings with the success of that event. I want to thank River Oaks Town uh, Homes Co-op for uh, hosting. Uh, residents, I share your sentiment as regards to the property taxes. My taxes uh, did increase as well, so we will all be um, standing together in this fight to uh, get our taxes back to reasonable amounts, if it's at all and realistically possible. Um, as, the, as the mayor stated, uh, the Cayman City portion of the taxes did not increase, as it not has it hasn't increased in many years. Um, so this is uh, definitely something that's heartfelt by all the residents and we stand with you as your leaders in this community and we'll stand with you as we fight to get some reasonable resolution to property taxes. Now we can't be naive and think that, you know, cost of living does go up. Most of us moved to the south suburbs years ago when, you know, to get away from certain elements and it costs to live in certain places and this apparently in somebody's eyes they think that's just the case here in Cayman City so uh, we got to be realistic it is a big hit it is a big hit for all of us um, but again we're going we're gonna to stand with you and fight them um, you've heard the mayor state that there's a uh, he's going to be fighting in Springfield for uh, a property tax stay or uh, cap in this area so Let's hope and pray for the best results in, in, in that fight, and we have to stand with them in that regard. Um, <clears throat> residents on Oglesby, I've gotten your calls. Uh, we'll be passing those complaints on to the Public Works Department, uh, so we hopefully we can get that resolved in the next few days. Uh, and that is all, oh, Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Third Ward Alderman Tillman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I also want to thank the residents that came out to the July 1st, 3rd and 4th Ward Town Hall meeting. If you want a recap of that meeting, it is posted on my Facebook page, Alderman DeAndre Tillman. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out to myself, 708-891-8193. The next Town Hall meeting is August 5th, 630 uh, at Downey Park Fieldhouse. Uh, additionally, I want to remind the residents that July 24th, we have the I-94 Dalton Road Public Informational Meeting. Uh, we really want to encourage the residents in the third ward to attend that meeting as the meeting topic will directly affect us in our ward. So again, that is July 24th, 5 to 7 p.m. at the Calumet City Public Training Center, which is located at 24 State Street. Uh, I also want to let the residents know that August 17th is the 8th annual back to school picnic for the 3rd and 4th Ward. Uh, that is going to be held in Downey Park uh, at noon. So look out for more information as we will be putting out those flyers soon. And if any residents want to participate, call my office once again. That number is 708-891-8193. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Second Ward, Alderman Wilson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I have a lot, but I'll break it up. Um, first, um, if you need to contact me via email, please do so at Monet, M-O-N, E as in Edward, T as in Tom, at alderwomanwilson.com. If you need to contact me by phone, you can call me and text me at 708-586-4990. As you send me text messages of things um, that are going on in the neighborhood, I do forward them to the appropriate departments so they can be uh, handled. Thank you to Public Works and thank you to uh, Director Tillman and her office for the hard work that you've been doing on behalf of the second ward. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Wanda Smith um, she is new to our second ward. Um, we have several blocks that have been added. We've moved from 3,500 to maybe about 7,500 residents in the second ward. Um, so thank you, Wanda, for opening your home for the second ward block uh, meeting as well as the meet and greet. Um, we had a, an, an amazing time breaking bread and networking with each other. What I'd like to move on to now is the issue of taxes. Um, 
I, along with my colleagues, do stand behind uh, the city of Cayman City and the residents. We do thank our mayor for taking steps in his uh, office um, here as mayor as well on the state level. Um, but the second ward has been dealing with taxes for 28 months. When I took office, um, some of you all remember, if you signed in, I asked you what were your taxes, are they too high? We did an analysis of, of that 28 months ago from recent communications and meetings. And we had some people that were paying $3,500 28 months ago who are now paying $9,000. Uh, what we did, we, we tried to wait and go through the process on the county level and on the state level. The second ward has created, and we spoke at, have spoken to the Tribune about it, um, a Department of Justice claim. Department of Justice, um, as well as HUD, had, has legislation and policies that make it illegal to redline in communities, meaning you can't if you're a certain marginalized group, can't go to certain areas. Right now, these property taxes are redlining us in reverse. It's the new form of redlining. It's making it where we can't get out of certain neighborhoods. And the, the gentleman that spoke said that he didn't like what Maria Pappas was saying, but Maria Pappas spoke the truth. We have to take accountability. I have never seen this many people in a council meeting. Our taxes is like weight gain. It didn't happen overnight. We have to attend not only our council meetings, but everybody that taxes us. The park district meetings, the school board meetings. Most of us pay taxes for three school boards, elementary, high school, and district 510, which is the junior college. Do we know where that money is going to? What is it being used for? We also have to draft logical responses. There is a report that came out that said the state of Illinois is 50 out of 50 states in how we fund schools. We're funding schools on the backs of homeowners. We need to figure out a way to restructure that. We're paying money like we have blue ribbon schools here. I live here. I have two kids here. I'm paying for three school districts, but I also pay for private elementary school and private college. Everybody can't make that sacrifice. I do thank uh, the youth football team for coming because it is a struggle. Having outreach programs may be the difference in keeping the lights on and keeping your kids safe and active. We have to do our part as a community. We can't blame one or any official. If this is your first meeting, I have residents that have lived here 40 years and ask me, what's the address to City Hall? We have to stand up, get engaged, and get active. I will also publicly state what I told the reporter. I will not support any legislation that freezes our taxes. I am requesting that they be reduced, capped, and then frozen. If you freeze me underwater, I'm still underwater frozen. If you freeze me holding a boulder that I cannot support, I'm just frozen holding a heavy boulder. We need help. We need assistance. Your elected officials live on your block. We are the same. We have the same wants and needs. So, tonight we have jazz on the grass, and tonight I'm beginning my birthday celebrations, and that's on a lighter note. And so I know everybody wants to get out of here to enjoy jazz on the grass. Um, at the library. July 13th, there's in-person registration for the Calumet City Chargers National Youth Football Team, and that is on my page, artofwomanwilson.com. Uh, you can also follow that on social media sites. Uh, July 14th, I will be celebrating and hosting 
on behalf of Cook County Commissioner Donna Miller, her hats off to women empowerment. Uh, you can go to my page. There are tickets still available to attend that. That's going to be at the uh, Ravislow Country Club. On uh, July 15th, I will go live on my social media page um, at 10 a.m. We are going to announce the nominees for the Vision of We Awards. The Vision of We Awards will be held Saturday, August 17th at the VFW at 664 Hurst Street. Right now, uh, when I got up this morning, we were at 98 nominations. I did not take the nominations down or close them yet. So you can go to alderwomanwilson.com, nominate a neighbor that does well in the community and goes unnoticed or underappreciated, a young person that is a volunteer, a small business. We're going to narrow the nominations down, but uh, we will go live to announce who the honorees will be, and five honorees will receive a Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award signed by uh, President Biden. And again, that information is on alderwomanwilson.com. On uh, July 20th is a national holiday. That is my birthday. I will be in Las Vegas honoring both of my boys who are receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award from President Joe Biden um, for their work as volunteers here in Calumet City and um, Atlanta, Georgia. On August 3rd, we are having the Vision of We Community Day in the parking lot of 79th Street Barbecue, which is located at 1719 River Oaks Drive. That will run from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. We will have resource tables for everyone in the community, youth, uh, our seniors. Uh, we have giveaways, uh, games, uh, free food outside, and then we have discounted food inside the restaurant. Um, we have secured KB Evans Experience Soul inside the restaurant. They will be performing live with the band. The cost of admission is just school supplies. Bring a book bag, bring a pack, pack of paper, uh, bring some pencils. Again, we all are going through this together and it's the vision of we. So just bring something. Those school supply donations will then be donated to the church at 415 Saginaw for the second ward partnership back to school event on August 31st. All of this information will be um, loaded on my website, autowomenwilson.com. You can click the link to go to my social media pages um, from that. Again, thank you. Should you need me, call me. Um, I do have to give a special shout out to Mr. Robert Cox for calling me on my cell phone today. That means he got it from watching this uh, live. So thank you. You done, all the woman? I think, well, for right now. I remember right. some stuff, but I'll wait till all later. Right. All right, I got you. <laughs> all right. First word, Alderman Navarrete. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be brief uh, to respect everyone's time. I think we've touched on all the important topics. Uh, obviously, um, over the last m uh, month or so, um, since everyone's been receiving those tax bills, it's been the um, number one issue for phone calls that I've received. And, and of course, everyone's uh, working toward the common goal to try to straighten this out. So um, on August 7th, um, I will have a, a town hall meeting at 6 p.m. at the VFW. Uh, that's at 664 Hirsch, on the corner of Hirsch and um, Pulaski, not too far up the road here. Uh, again, that's going to be August 7th at 6 p.m. Uh, the initial agenda that was announced was to talk about economic development, um, to touch on the progress of uh, the Burnham Avenue revitalization plan, along with the State Street um, DSER plan, and uh, grants received for Riverside Drive uh, for the first ward. Um, we will give an update at that town hall meeting on any other new information uh, regarding the property taxes. So we'll try not to take up the entire meeting on that topic. But uh, again, I, I've, 
I, I feel like uh, you know everyone deserves an update and see where we're at um, come August 7th. So we will touch on that um, as well. So uh, also just want to give a shout out to um, the uh, mayor's office and the clerk's office for the help with uh, helping um, coordinate the Shepherd's Fest. Uh, this is a combination of the St. Andrew's Family Fest and the St. Victor's Fest uh, that used to be in town, uh, is now combined under one festival. Uh, it would be at the Our Lady of Knock uh, worship site uh, located um, on the south end of town. I don't have that address, but I will have it at the next meeting. Um, there will be additional announcements. The, the festival is August 16th, August 17th, and August uh, 18th. And there will be um, live music, uh, food, um, kids, uh, carnival rides, and activities for uh, residents to come out and enjoy themselves. So uh, again, we'll have another announcement for that. But again, thank you to those who, uh, for all the help uh, from the clerk's office and the mayor's office again. Uh, that's all I have this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if I may. Uh, Our Lady of Knox, 501 163rd Street. It's located in the beautiful Sixth Ward. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alden. Uh, you know, I usually don't respond to residents who uh, come up to public forum because that's the residents' time to talk to the city council and to the city. But I want to address, and I've said this, that tonight we have a protest that Alderman Tillman just mentioned, a protesting taxes. I've said this and I'll say it again. Calumet City has not raised taxes and we are not responsible for the reassessment. There are 11 tax bills and taxing bodies on the tax bill. Calumet City has not raised taxes in four or five years and probably longer than that. We just had our director come up and present our budget. I am as pissed off as anybody because my taxes went, off, went up as well. And we go, we're going to demand that Cook County Assessor Fritz Keggy come to Calumet City and explain to every resident, every elected official, the assessment and why, why he's switching the taxes from residential, from business owners to residents. It is squarely in the hands of Fritz Keggy for assessments and property taxes. The Calumet City is not responsible for the high tax bills that you got. It is squarely in Fritz Keggy's hand. And I'm going to direct our city attorney to consider following a class action lawsuit against Cook County and Fritz Keggy, and we'll ask every member to join that class action lawsuit and every community to join that class action lawsuit against the county, against Fritz Keggy, and ask them to reassess our area. I mentioned in addition to that, that I'm following the bill in Springfield to encourage the governor and the county to have a flat tax rate for communities that are suffering. We are a border community. We know that a bunch of people go across the border for many consumer products. We understand that. But we also understand that we shouldn't be held hostage by our location, and we shouldn't be held hostage by Fritz Keggy, who has never come to Calumet City and talked about this taxes except once. Now, we know that senior exemptions, we know homestead exemptions matter, we know veterans exemptions matter, but we also understand that Fritz Keggy should not be taking the taxes from businesses and putting it on homeowners. That is not a proper way to do that. He admitted in the paper, probably in January, that he made a mistake with assessments. He said that in the paper, that he made a mistake with assessments. Well, own up to your mistakes, Mr. Keggy, and reassess Calumet City, reassess other communities, because we can't take it anymore. My taxes went up just like everyone else. The city council has told the public that we're going to fight for you. We're going to do that. And we're going to make sure that everyone is involved in this process. So if we can file the class action lawsuit, that is going to be the first step. Uh, I believe we have a private right of action. Uh, we have a lot of attorneys here that can tell us that we do have a private right of action to file against the county. Uh, and let's see where it goes. So this is the first step. We're going to make sure that we call out Fritz Kagey and make him come to Calumet City, explain to you, the residents, why these taxes are going up. Because again, 
Calumet City has not raised your taxes. We have been responsible with taxpayers' money, and we're going to continue to do so, and we're going to fight for our residents and fight for these high-ass tax bills. So I wanted to say that and let you know I respect everyone that comes up. I don't like a, we always get back to you, but I want to make sure I make that statement and let you know that this city is going to fight for you and fight to get these taxes reduced. Now, I can't promise that these taxes are going to be reduced. I cannot do that. When we go back to Springfield in November, we have to encourage the Cook County Assessor to do a reassessment and give you a tax fund back, tax refund back. Those taxes that are due August 1st still have to be paid. I'm not encouraging anyone not to pay the taxes. There's a protest that you can do. There's a process that you can do. We're going to encourage Fritz Kegge to stand right here just like we asked the residents to do and stand before you and work with this city and ask him to work with our communities in the Southland as we come up with solutions uh, and we have to find a better way to fund our taxes. We have to find a, a better way. Uh, we're going to work with Fritz Kegge, but we're going to demand that he come here before this council and before the residents. Our next item on the agenda is uh, informational items to be accepted and placed on file. Um, item A is a notice for detour routes. If everyone uh, know that uh, there are routes, uh, construction that is going on, uh, Matt Berger will, will tell us later in the meeting where we have construction going on in Calumet City. But we want to encourage everyone to follow those detour routes uh, in and out of Calumet City. Uh, so item 8 is informational items to be placed on file. Is there a motion to approve item 8A? Second. Second. Motion made by Alderman Smith, second by Alderman Wilson. All in favor? Item 8A is approved by uh, consensus. Item 9A, 9, 1 through 10 are new business action items. Items 2, 3, uh, four are requests from different organizations that want to use the Sears parking lot. Uh, I'm taking a different approach than last year. Last year, I wanted to, uh, when these items came in, uh, the mayor's office made the decision. I would like the council involved in this. Uh, the Sears parking lot is used because the park district uh, gets overcrowded. Uh, so I'm putting all of these on the agenda. We have three items and three requests. Uh, tonight from uh, Simeon Alumni Association, Morgan Park, uh, Blue and Gold Group to utilize the Sears uh, parking lot. Uh, in addition to that, we also have item 10 on the agenda requested by Alderman Navarrete that the City Council uh, start the process looking for a headhunter uh, to do a search for a Community and Economic Development Director. Are there any questions regarding items 9, 1 through 10? We, if, ha we had question. well, and uh, on the parking lot usage, but the question that came, that was asked of us, it's a potential lawsuit, so would, we would not be able to speak on it out here. It's not pending. It may be. Before executive session, do you want to go in executive session? Okay. Alderman, if we can do it at the end of the meeting, we haven't received anything for litigation. Sears is owned by the city, so anyone that wants to sue the city, they have to contact. City, city attorney. Okay, so what do we, what do you want us to? Do? Well, anyone that that wants to use a Sears parking lot, they have to get insurance. They have to go through the steps and they have to submit the request. So um, it it wasn't that, and um, all of these individuals clearly did that. Yes. It was that an employee asked them to pay to park. That's what it was, and that has been made public. Yeah, if you can send me that information, we'd have to just deal with it. Yeah. 
but the process for using Sears for uh, the Forest Preserve and using the Sears parking lot is simple. Uh, letter of intent, and then also they have to have insurance uh, to protect the city. Uh, that's all that we require and that the organization be registered. So currently we have uh, probably 20 events that's going on at the Forest Preserve, and we asked the Forest Preserve and the sponsoring group to submit a letter to the city and along with a copy of the insurance, uh, certificate of insurance holding the city harmless. So just to clarify, all they have to do is have an insurance policy for the day or whatever. They don't have to pay a fee to the city or to anybody else? No. No. Okay. No. Uh, uh, I got a question. Um, this potential lawsuit um, is because the person had to pay or they didn't have to pay, but they were approached to pay. Oh, okay. So they didn't pay. They just. No, they. They are alleging that we are. Um, charging to park. Charging and kicking back. And that's not the case, right, Mayor? No, he just said no. Yeah. I mean, they would have to identify the employee because, I mean, no employee is going to direct they them. They did. Please get that information to the attorney because. Yeah, and ask them to identify the date because this is the first I'm hearing of this. It went out to the entire graduating class that they've ever had at the school. So if they rented a, a space from the Cook County Forest Preserve and that's different than our property at Sears. So our, our property at Sears is for strictly parking only. Yes, so they, they have their permit, um, but they were trying to negotiate um, parking at Sears. They did park there last year. They did follow what was requested to park there. And to our knowledge, like you just said, none of that has changed, okay. except for this caveat. Well, if you can give that information to the city attorney, okay. Uh, but please have them put it in writing because people change their mind and change their stories. So we want to make sure if they're going to accuse a city employee that they put it in writing, uh, identifying them, and we'll have the the police department and our city attorney investigate. So item nine, one through ten are new action items. Uh, are there any questions regarding items one through ten? If not, uh, can there, someone make a motion to approve items nine, one through ten? Right. Second. Motion made by Alderman Navarrete, second by Alderman Smith. Smith, uh, Smith Gardner. Yeah. No, Smith Gardner. I had a question Smith. after. <clears throat> Most. Motion made by Smith. Alderman Smith, okay. second by Alderman Gardner. Correct. And Alderman Navarrete for questioning. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just uh, on item number 10, did we have a estimated time to complete? Is that something that we were hoping to have on the agenda or posted when? Uh, do we have a date on that? On how long that RFP would take? A couple of weeks. That was all. Thank you. And the process again is just, I'm sorry, the process again is RFQ. Um, and then from there, there's no RFP needed, just an RFQ and then we kind of go from there? Or, or should this there. be an RFP? Like asking for costs to do the search or? Since this is a service, uh, we can do an RFQ and then uh, we'll quote. include the, uh, the information that was forwarded by you to uh, as well when we, do, when we start that process. So we'll just do an RFQ and include the company as well. Well, I just want to make sure that, uh, so we'll get the qualifications for the company, but that doesn't necessarily know how much they're going to charge. We're not going to know. Right, right, right. So this person would not be an employee you're hiring an outside I'm just saying after we do the RFQ and we find out the qualified contractors to perform the search, right. uh, then we negotiate a price there or do we have to issue an RFP? No, we could just negotiate prices from there. Okay. More generally, the RFQ is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank You're you, welcome. Attorney. 
We had a, uh, a motion to approve by Alderman Smith, a second by Alderman Gardner. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Uh, Navarrete. Yes. Wilson. Yes. Tillman. Yes. Williams. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Patton. Yes. Smith. Yes. Items 9 through 1 are approved, 7 to 0. Thank you, City Council. Item 10 are new business items, building permits. Uh, are there any questions regarding the four building permits, new fence requests on the agenda? Any corrections? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, the item number 3, 1534 Burnham, uh, that's in the 6th Thank you, Alderman. We got new maps. We'll have uh, uh, Director Tillman uh, confirm if we can approve approve the addresses, and then have Director Tillman confirm uh, item three uh, that address. So is there a motion to approve uh, the new fence items that are on the agenda? So moved. Motion made by Alderman Smith. Is there a second? Second by Alderman Patton. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Smith? Yes. Patton? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Williams? Yes. Gilman? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 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 Item 11 are resolutions. Uh, I don't have the resolution for my nephew who is uh, on the Puerto Rican Olympian team. Uh, so I want to congratulate George Condit for being uh, Olympian. They're going to face the United States of America soon uh, in their round and division. Uh, I told him that I would be rooting for the United States of America though. So. Maybe a little conflict, so when he comes back, we'll have him come to the city council. Um, but we have item, uh, I would ask the council to approve the resolutions, uh, and we will uh, present them. Uh, I know uh, Alderman Gardner has requested uh, the resolution, and we, uh, we, we're not going to read the resolution, but we definitely want to thank everyone that came out to the services for Alderman Gardner's uh, grandmother uh, was well attended. Um, Alderman Gardner, thank you for having us as well. Um, so, uh, Alderman Tillman, is there a motion to approve the resolutions as presented? Yes, so move. Motion uh, to approve by Alderman Tillman, second by Alderman Smith. Madam Clerk, can you please call a roll? Patton? Yes. Smith? Yes. Pepper, yes. Wilson? Yes. Tillman? Yes. Tillman? Yes. Yes. Item 12 are new business financial matters. Are there any one through 29? Yes. A question, Mayor. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, two things I would like to uh, item number 23. What's, like, the, what's your direction with the autumn? Uh, I would like to make a motion to uh, remove this item. Motion made by Alderman Gardner. Is there a second? Second. To remove item 23. Second by Alderman Patton. Just want to have discussion. Okay. This item was recently brought to and deferred to the Finance Committee for review. Uh, after having several conversations with the city attorney. She issued a legal opinion regarding uh, the usage of public funds to block clubs. It does not permit the city to use public funds for block clubs. So this item is being removed. May. Uh, I, I did read the opinion and I was going to ask if we can, I wasn't sure if it was proper to go in executive session, but the legal opinion came out today. Uh, I thought it did say that we couldn't give grants but we could, and I could be mistaken, but, but we couldn't use neighborhood accounts. So the mayor's neighborhood account is the account listed here today. So we could use neighborhood accounts, but we couldn't 
use grants, or is it, or is it public funds altogether? My understanding is that um, all the, each alderman gets a certain amount annually for um, neighborhood events. And this certainly would fall within that for an alderman to use part of his or her stipend to pay for this event. Or the mayor. Or the mayor. Or the clerk. It's coming out of the mayor's the account. If, it, if the mayor gets the same type of stipend, yes. And, I just does, and, I, and I don't know because it just came up this afternoon. Uh, for me, does the village have a po the city have a policy about what the money can be used for? Probably not. So I would recommend that we have a policy which we can put together so that it's only used for, um, so that we describe the events that it's used for and the specific items that it's used for. So for example, you can buy a keg of root beer, but you can't buy a keg of old stuff. You know, that well, I'm serious, like that, you know, that type of that type of stuff. You can use it for food, for entertainment. So the types of things you're using it for, and the types of items that are prohibited. Attorney Sterk, uh, can you talk into the mic more so we can oh, sorry. make sure we record it properly? Right. So are you removing it? So. So is it? Proper or not proper item so 20? So it's coming out of the mayor's fund? Because it's public funds. That's public funds. Right. To my knowledge. Right. It, should, it, should, it should come out of the elected official's stipend. That's my point. Rather than just come out of the city, come out of the city treasury. So. Well, the language of this states that private block parties should not be funded with general city funds. Right. So to my knowledge, no funds should be used for block parties or block right. clubs. Right, that, that's the conflicting language that I'm I, talking about, because I, I, I read that too, and as you continue to read, it seems to be a little confusion. I think, I think the confusion is, it sounds like, and, and maybe I'm wrong, Attorney Sterk, but it sounds like the attorney is under the impression that the money that we get is not directly from the city. Like, we get a stipend to then go spend on neighborhood things. Is that what you're, because the, 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 the funds we're talking about are city funds. Right. Um, that are just earmarked for different things. So can, since it's coming directly from the city funds, can we use it for something like this? If it's coming out of your, if it's coming out of the alderman stipend or the mayor stipend, then yes. And that, but I'm, we're recomm I'm recommending that we have, that the city develop a policy going forward about how the funds can be used, under what circumstances. I, I would caution, because I, I read the opinion also, and it was a little conflicting, because this, as we just stated, the source of funds is still government funds. I think the best practice, or better practice, would be to just um, direct the funds directly to a certain source. If you're gonna buy food or something, just direct the funds directly to the source, rather than just give it to uh, the organization, organization right. that can spend it improperly, potentially. Um, so that would, yeah, that would be my recommendation. I agree with that. Would you like the low column? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a motion in a second, and uh, and we're in discussion period. I will just say this: the block clubs have come, and, and the question has been. If 19 block clubs come to the city saying they want support for their block club, can the city provide that? And if the city wants to develop a policy, then develop that policy. Um, but I don't think the block clubs are coming here in vain and telling us that they're not going to use the money for its intended purpose. If it's the wishes of the council to have and donate products to companies, create that policy. Um, if it's if you want to go to Sam's Club and tell the Block Club to submit us, you know your list so we can support your Block Club, do that. But if if, if it's the wishes of the council to do that, um, your your motion, Alderman, is to remove this item. But if it's your intention to bring this back, um, per the attorney, 
uh, create some policy around this and put a limit on the number of block clubs that can come before the city and make that request. So yeah. that's all I would ask the council to do. Mayor, I think we're open to that. Um, we're just looking at the piece of it that specifically says should not be funded with general city funds. I'm okay with supporting block clubs. I don't think any other alderman is opposed to supporting block clubs. Um, at this point, we've been given a legal opinion, and I just want to adhere to it. Okay. So your, the motion on the floor is to remove item 23. There's a, a motion in the second. You've had discussion. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll on item 23? Gardner. Yes. Patton. Yes. Smith. Yes. Navarrete. Yes. Wilson. May I ask, so it's removing, but we can bring it back? Yes. When, yes. Okay. Yes. Tillman. Yes. Williams. Yes. Uh, just for the council benefit, the the, the group came before us and the date is August 3rd. So I would uh, would ask if the council can, if, if it's the intention to work with the block club, the date that was given to the block club or given to us is not August 12th, it's August 3rd. So city attorney, I would, would ask that you move uh, with speed to draft a, a, a policy around uh, what kind of support we can give to block clubs. Yes, sir. Uh, Alderman Gardner, your wishes on uh, the remaining financial matters? Uh, emergency uh, bill list. I would like to make a motion to uh, remove items that exceed the $1,000 limit per our ordinance, sounds of authority, municipal systems, Vantage Production Group, and Alf Alafia Production Group and defer it to uh, a future bill listing for approval. Motion made by Alderman Gardner for those items. Is there a second? Could you repeat that motion? And which items? I would like to make a motion to remove. Can you speak up a little bit, Alderman? Sure. Speak I would like to make a motion to remove sounds of authority. These items from the bill list. Sounds of authority. Emergency bill list. Emergency, I'm sorry. Emergency bill list. Sounds of Authority, Municipal Systems, Vantage Production Group, Alafia Production Group, and defer them to a future bill list for approval. Second. Motion made by Alderman Gardner, second by Alderman Padden. Madam Clerk, can you call, please call the roll for those items to remove from the emergency bill list? Patton? Yes. Smith? Yes. Navarrete? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Williams? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Um, Alderman, on the other items on the agenda, financial matters? Yes. Uh, no. Under the bill list, I would like to make a motion to remove items uh, CDM Entertainment, Jack Sounds, he got one. Oh. Mm -hmm. Jack's, Jack's Sounds, okay. Jason Grant, and all the other jazz on the grass expenditures to be deferred to come out of the library special events account 020-07-5293. So the motion on the floor is to remove those items from the city bill listing and to correct the count for those items for the jazz on the grass will be the count stated by the alderman on the record. Uh, what's the account number, alderman? 02007-52993. Second for discussion. Second by Alderman Patton. Uh, are Alderman. we going to ask the same question? <clears throat> I would just uh, speak on behalf of myself and, and the city clerk and ask for a, a list of all the uh, specific uh, vendors uh, so we don't 
uh, accidentally pay something that was it was the intention of the council to remove. So if you could, if we could be provided with a, uh, a specific uh, list of all the vendors. All sure. The, I'm sure. sure the clerk would appreciate that. Sure. Alderman we'll Ted. Yeah, I've got a question about that. Are we? Do we have the authority to reclassify something to a library line item, or do we have to remove those bills and refer them to the library board? The proper motion would be to remove them and refer Let's them to the library. That. Let's do that. So if you want to so I'll rescind my second. Alderman, do you rescind your I'll first? I'll rescind my motion. So the proper motion would be to uh, remove those items and refer those items to the library board for approval. So I would like to make a motion to defer uh, jazz on the grass related expenditures to the library board for approval. Second. And to remove them from the bill list. Motion made by Alderman Gardner, second by Alderman Patton. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll on the amended motion? Smith. Yes. Navarrete. Yes. Wilson. Yes. Tillman. Yes. Williams? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Yes. Alderman Gardner on the rest of the items. <laughs> Last but not least, I would like to make a motion to approve items 1 through 22. Motion made to approve items 1 through 22. Is there a second? Second for discussion. Second uh, by Alderman Patton for discussion. I just have a question about number four. Is this a monthly fee? Or is this a one-time retainer? Uh, it's a one-time retainer, Alderman. So should we amend that to reflect that? or? I don't know if it comes up again, I think we'll know. Okay, so, so services have already been rendered? Services are being rendered for uh, June 20th till the land bank, yes. And the services were for, do we know? Uh, I service, I service report just came in on the properties, yes. Are they for property related services? Property related. This is land bank? Land bank stuff? Yeah, land bank, tax certificates, uh, first time home buyers program. This is what this is for. Do we anticipate any further um, cost with this, or is that just like a one time that's going to cover us on all the work that's been done? We do anticipate more cost with that. Okay. I got a question, Mayor, about the. Well, before we move on. Before we move on. Okay. So, do we have an anticipated cost of, of what the services will, will be? Uh, no, I can get that to you all, but. Can we approve the anticipated cost prior to the bills coming in? Yes, I would say uh, that, yes. Attorney said yes. Yes, yeah, because the, these services have already been rendered and now we're approving the bill. It'd be nice to approve the services before they're rendered. But thank you for the clarification. Alden, is this question on item four? Is that, is that item four? Is that we were trying to see if we can do it. No, the oh, emergency, no, no. the emergency items that were removed. That's it. <coughs> so our system. Oh, okay. Okay. Running just a tad bit behind. Okay. So sorry, our systems are running a, a tad bit. So we're trying to ping off of each other's um, system, but we may have, you printed it out, uh, a motion to reconsider. So let's, well, let's continue, continue, continue this. Well, yeah. we, we have a motion and a second, and we're in discussion phase on items one through 22. So if there's no, no more questions about items one through 22, Madam Clerk, please call a roll on items one through 22, and then we'll go back to the discussion. Of Never attend. Yes. Wilson? Yes. Tillman? Yes. Williams? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Patton? Yes. Smith? Yes. Okay. Alderman items, uh, well, let's go to the question for reconsideration. Should that be done at the end of the meeting? 
Is there a certain item, Alderman, for? It, it looks like everything that we need for the weekend. These are, have already been paid. They have already been yes, paid. Yes, for the sake of not violating our ordinance tonight, which I stated, our cap is $1,000. So these can go on a future bill list for clarification. Thank you for that clarification. But they have already been. I, we just didn't want any issue. OK. That's why they appeared on the emergency bill list, because they have already been, checks have already been cut. Okay. okay, we are okay over here. Okay. Alderman Gardner, uh, continue items 24. Last but not least, I would like to make a motion to approve items 24 through 29 as so presented. As uh, so amended, correct? So amended, I'm sorry. So amended. Alderman Gardner makes a motion to approve items 24 through 29 as so amended. Seconded by Alderman Smith. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Well, sir. One second. <laughs> So looking at the past budget, um, there there was some, it was a difference in the amount previously budgeted for the Little League. Yes, that amount. Are we increasing that moving forward? That is correct, Alderman. On okay. item 25, the correct amount should be $2,500, Alderman. But we can take a look at it and increase it moving forward? Yes. While we are in the budget? Yes. So is your motion to leave this or to amend this? Item 24, 25. Amend. Is it the consensus to leave it where it is currently budgeted and then budget for a higher amount? During budget talks? Yes, I'm fine with that. If, I don't think it would go any higher than what, what it stated right here on 25, though. No, it's not. So if, it, if that's the case, if, you, if your request is to leave it right there, then the motion, just keep the same motion that we're voting on right now. So don't amend it. If, if there's a motion on the floor in a second, to keep it at the certain at the amount that it's on the agenda. So if you want to change that, you can change that and just increase it in the budget. So Alderman, we'll direct the treasurer to answer the question regarding item 25, and then uh, to clear up what the council. Okay, because we were looking at the budget. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, just uh, so everyone is on the same page, uh, the uh, uh, the amount uh, that you want to uh, uh, award this particular organization is well within the purview of, of the city council to do so in whatever amount you deem necessary or appropriate. But understand that this is this is not a retro pay. The uh, the old fiscal year is closed. Uh, this payment it will be uh, we are operating in the 2024-25 fiscal year budget. So this is the current budget. So just so everybody understands that there won't be a, a second payment for this year. Whatever payment is made will be the one and only payment in within this fiscal year. Does everyone understand that? Yes. 
so yes, we want to put at the budgeted amount. Uh, I'll make a motion at the budgeted amount that we have. So let's withdraw. Let's withdraw the motion by Alderman Gardner and the second by Alderman Smith. I withdraw my motion. Alderman. So the proper motion to approve items 24 through 29 and then 25 as amended. The amended motion for items 25 should be at the amount of $2,500 per the budget from the line item stated in item 25. That should be the proper motion, Alderman Gardner. Okay. I would like to make a motion to approve items 24 through 29 with item number 25 as amended. So motion made by Alderman Gardner, second by Alderman Smith. Madam Clerk, can you call the motion on the amended item? Uh, Wilson. Yes. Tilden. Yes. Williams. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Patton. Yes. Smith. Yes. Uh, Navarrete. Yes. Thank you, Council, uh, for that. Uh, to everyone's surprise, we do not have executive session tonight. Yes. Amen. So we'll go around for unfinished business. Alderman Navarrete. Uh, thank you, Mayor. J just briefly. Um, if I could request payment of the PO for the back to school event, it is possible that maybe I'm missing a step if you could help out with. I know we discussed it before. Um, but yeah, if we can try to resolve that one. And I'll send an email just to point it out. But appreciate the help. That's all I had this evening. Thank you. Okay. Unfinished business, Alderwoman Wilson. Thank you. Um, August 10th is the uh, second ward block meeting. And again, we will be uh, meeting and gathering at the house of Wanda Smith and family are hosting us again. Um, and that's August 10th. I would like to thank Maria and Sasha from the mayor's office for their assistance um, in walking myself and my chief of staff through uh, Sung Art, and we are now ready to spend uh, <laughs> within the limits and the guidelines on the needs of our ward. Um, so we are very appreciative. Thank you. Um, see everyone in a few minutes. Um, and again, if you need me, call or text me 708-586-4990. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. Happy belated birthday to our city clerk, Dr. Ingoda T. Figs. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Tillman? Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Alderman Williams, unfinished business? Uh, just if anybody has any uh, concerns, please don't hesitate to call. The award, 708-212-2240 uh, or 708-891-8194. Thank you and happy birthday, Dr. Figs. Thank you, Alderman. Unfinished business, Alderman Gardner. Thank you, Mayor. Happy birthday, Dr. Figs. May God bless you. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Gard. I'm Alderman Patton. Uh, I will wish our clerk a happy birthday, even though I texted her on her actual birthday. Uh, Alderman Smith, uh, unfinished business. Yes, uh, just want to let the residents know that the civil war will be offering School supplies, if you are in need of school supplies, please contact the office email by email. Email a smith at calumetcity.org. Uh, school Board 157 is having its uh, back to school event on August the 24th. The 74 will be supporting that event. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact uh, my office. Uh, that event is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. August the 24th at Hoover Sprung. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, there being no further business to come before the City Council, is there a motion to adjourn at 8.01 p.m.? So moved. Motion made by Alderman Smith. Is there a second? Second. second. I was about to say, y'all want to stay here longer? Uh, second by Alderman Patton. All in favor? Meeting adjourned at 8.01 p.m. Thank you, Alderman. <laughs>